Hello, class. Hello, class. Danushki De La Viera is here. She is a business analyst at Unifund CCR and an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati and one heck of a Tableau developer. Danushki, how are you? Good. How are you? Hello, everybody. Yeah. Flash you in for a will treat. Danushki is an absolute rock star with Tableau, and I thought that you would all would benefit from hearing her perspective um, on data visualization and something that's near and dear to your hearts, getting a job. So, um, Danushki, can you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. So, um, as Phil said, my name is Danushki. That's too hard. You can call me D. Um, I'm originally from Sri Lanka and I moved to the US nine years ago for college. And I graduated from the University of Cincinnati with my um, bachelor's in economics and finance, stayed on to do my master's um, and graduated with my master's with applied economics. So during my master's um, course, I was able to take a data visualization class and I thought, okay, this is great. I love numbers. I love designing things and I want to uh, use my creative um, aspect as well. And um, Jeff Schaefer, who is coincidentally my boss now, was a, a teacher of that class and I instantly fell in love. It was a mix of everything that I wanted. And um, even though in the beginning I wasn't looking for a data visualization job in particular. I was looking to be more of an analyst, um, you know, use my economic uh, theories and everything that I learned in my master's class, predictive modeling and all that kind of stuff. Um, I got the opportunity to work with Jeff and because I already had that love for data visualization, he said, sure, you can um, do a, a, be a business analyst for us and which will involve a lot of Tableau because he was He's totally invested and obsessed with Tableau. So that's where I am now. I work for a company called Unifund here in Cincinnati. And I am a business analyst that works with Tableau almost every day. Great. Yeah. Well, you, I'm already going to go off script a little bit. And it's my contention that data viz can be a specialty. But I'm of the opinion that if you work in finance or marketing or human resources or if you're an economist, it's a nice tangential skill to have. Um, can you talk Absolutely. a little bit about how um, you're not just doing data viz in a vacuum, but applying it to a particular discipline? Because many of my students are either majors in one thing, but getting a certificate uh, in analytics or taking data viz course because they find it interesting. But just the way the world is going, um, it seems to me that you know, not too many companies would hire a data viz specialist. It would be a skill of another job. Yeah, so um, data viz can apply to so many jobs. And it's, it's such an awesome way of showing your data in an interesting manner that people actually care about the numbers and want to look at your numbers and your story is explained so much better. And it's not just numbers. These days we're seeing data viz in National Geography, The Economist, and everything it, it applies to everything um and um so lately i've been seeing projects on social good so a lot of um, ngos are using data viz now to explain their story whether it's you know it do really doesn't matter what it's about but whether it's um about showing their numbers showing their business stats or whether it's just talking about their social good and giving out um awareness. So it could be a marketing tool, it could be a business tool, it could even be something that you're using for art and graphic design. Um, I mean, I can keep going on, but it's uh, such a great um, tool to have as a, or a skill to have, no matter what uh, industry you're in. Couldn't agree more. And for my students who may not know, NGO stands for? Oh, there we go. <laughs> None. I'm sorry, was that a question? Yes, they may not know the acronym. Well, I know what it is, but go ahead. NGO stands for? Um, I'm not sure. What does NGO stand for? I'm drawing a blank now. Government organization, no? That's right, oh God. 
<laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> yes. Well, for the purposes of this conversation, you know much more about it than I do. So you mentioned Tableau. Um, are there other tools that you find particularly useful in your job and what are they? Um, so at Unifund, as a business analyst, we use a lot of SQL because that's where, um, or SQL, that's where our database and our data management happens. So it's, it, SQL is another great tool. It's free, it's convenient, and a lot of companies um, use it as their database management. So um, that's where we pull most of our data from. Of course, we have one-off jobs where someone will just send, on, send us an Excel sheet and Tableau actually gives you the opportunity to, you know, join different data sources together or blend them together. Um, so that's helpful. But I typically use Excel, SQL, a little bit of R sometimes given the project, um, and then Tableau. Great, great. Can you talk a little bit about how Tableau has evolved over time? Or I should, before I ask that, how long have you been using Tableau? I have been using Tableau now for four years. Okay. Can you wow. talk a little bit about <laughs> how it's evolved? Because I want to say that it launched in, was it, uh, I'd have to look it up. Was it 2000? I mean, there, there have been versions um, now we are in 2010.1, and there have been version. I'm sorry, so 2020.1. It's, it's early, you're off the hook. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's there's been, I think I started in version six, um, and it has, it, it, there has been incredible development since then. Well, whereas, I mean, of course, you could make your basic charts and things like that, but when it comes to doing mapping, mapping has grown immensely. You know, if you don't like the features that are on Tableau, it now allows you to um, connect to Mapbox, where mm -hmm. your, your um, map designs are just infinite. Mm -hmm. Um, and then and Viz animations have just come out and they're, everyone is going bananas over them. Yeah, but you call them transitions though. Yes, that's right. I did. There has been this big argument about whether it's animations or transitions because it can be both, but it's not. It, and if you know your tool well, you can make it, you know, like a movie pretty much. But um, most of the um, use case for this animation is mostly going to be transitions where you're going from ear to ear and you're showing your bar increasing and things like that. So yeah, this for the, um, for the assignment this week in the class, I added uh, a tra um, animation as a requirement for it. So they could, even if it were at a basic level, just understand it. But I do think it's a game changer regards, regardless of what you call it, because in the past, as you know, and you're far better at Tableau than I am, they're just year, year, boom. Uh, but now you can actually see it increasing or decreasing, or, or as you said, the applications are, and, and they're just getting started in a year or so. Right. I'm sure it'll be better. Yes, I, I think so. But Viz Animation, I mean, people could, you know, go a little overboard with it. So I'm wanting the class, use it in the right manner. <laughs> yeah, talk a little bit about that. Um, some people may think that Tableau prevents you from creating a bad visualization or a messy visualization. I'd argue that the opposite is true. And it's kind of like email. As I'm fond of saying, blame the Indian, not the arrow. Um, you can misuse email or misuse PowerPoint or misuse any application, in, including Tableau. Maybe what are some of the mistakes that you've seen uh, relatively new Tableau users make? Yeah, so um, I think something that I noticed all the time is that um, students or people that are trying to get into Tableau go on Twitter and they see all these amazing visualizations that people are making. And then they think, okay, I need to make this visualization. It's so cool. It's so bizarre. I need to learn how to make it. So they go download the Tableau workbook and they try to re-engineer. And that's wonderful. But some people get caught up in these crazy designs, these huge radial bar charts that are, you know, exploding from all over the place. It's exciting and it's cool, but 
you always have to think, what is my use case? Who am I showing this to? And are they going to instantly understand what's going on? Or are they going to be looking at this for 20 minutes and they're not going to understand anything? That's a great point. Because you need your audience to, in mind. Yeah. yeah. You need to uh, think, does my CEO that I'm going to show this to at the end of the day understand Tableau the way I do? Or are they going to be able to understand my point in one second? Hmm. You know, so yeah, I can get a little bit conflicting um, and some people can go overboard with using all these crazy charts and get caught up in all the... um, I don't know, the oh, crazy but dazzling of Tableau. <laughs> okay. okay, good, good. Um, can you tell me about one or more of your favorite visualizations? Sure. Um, if I can put my screen, I can show you. You should be able can to. Can I do that? If you, yeah, you should be able to. Oh, no. Tech issues. Oh, you know what? Don't even sweat it. Um, maybe we can put that, uh, you can send me the link and I could put it um, at the bottom of the Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to because it's, it's not the same as me telling you about it than me showing you. Um, so one of my absolute all-time favorite data visualizations is by Georgia Lupi. Uh, she's a fantastic designer. Um, she did a piece on uh, Nobel Prizes. Hmm. Uh, it's huge. It's on this giant wall and um, it has just so much wonderful detail and her design is just unmatchable. Um, again, it's, it's another one that you need to hold on a little bit, take your time, read it and understand. Um, but yeah, that, that's just uh, one of my absolute favorites. Then um, Jeff Schaefer, um, has a great piece on beautiful trash where he tra- where he tracks Cincinnati the route of the Cincinnati trash routes, and um, he ha- even has a little animation where you can see the little truck moving oh, um, cool. around Cincinnati. Amazing! Um, gosh, I can keep going on, but some of my favorite designers um, these days, uh, Sam O'Drill, he does amazing work. I can send you his tableau. Um, uh, public uh, link. Uh, of course, Kevin and Ken, if you are, you know, trying to start getting into Tableau, their um, website is phenomenal. It teaches you from the ground up what to do, what not to do. And if they ever make any kind of crazy viz, they'll have a little warning button that says, don't do this if you're in a work setting. Don't do this at home. This is just uh, something fun. Great, great. Yeah, I'll put links to them at the end. And then last yes. question before I get you out of here. Any tips for college graduates on how to interview or land their first jobs? Uh, yes. So if you are trying to look for um, a job where you're going to want to do some kind of data visualization, if that's your passion and you want to kind of drag it along with you with whatever you're doing, uh, and your company is looking for someone that has data visualizing skills as well, having a good Tableau public um, profile is so helpful. And I've heard so many successful success stories these days where they've just gone, showed out, shown their Tableau public profile and bam, that was the uh, deal, deal um, sealer. Mm-hmm. Um, then there are uh, new uh, things that have come up like doing a Tableau public or doing a Tableau resume mm-hmm. where you, your entire resume is a data visualization and it's interactable and um, it's just another way to make yourself unique. But in general, I have gone through this struggle of finding a job. I'm so fortunate for where I work now, but um, it's a struggle. And, I, and for me, especially being an international student, it was even more of a um, crazy situation because you, know, you had to prove to your company that you are so much better and that mm-hmm. it's worth investing in you. Yeah, so, I that you mentioned that because quite a few ASU, ASU students are from countries other than the United States. So I'm really glad that you made that point. 
yeah, it's, it's tough out there, but you can do it. Don't give up. <laughs> um, definitely huge tip is to make your resume different. Try to uh, differentiate yourself one way or the other. You don't want to just be another paper on this, in the stack. Um, something that I did for my resume personally is I had three little boxes uh, on top of my resume after my name and I um, uh, drew out three different qualities of mine that would help that company. So data visualization, critical thinking, analytics, and I kind of marked down um, the courses that I took to back up those um, qualities and also um, a couple of maybe awards that I won or just something to make me stand out and something for them to see the resume and be like, wait, what's this? Instead of just, oh, this is just the same old thing. So definitely try to differentiate yourself, um, whether it's your resume or your interview or whatnot. I'm really glad that you mentioned critical thinking. Um, have you ever seen the original movie Jurassic Park? Yes, of course. One of my favorite quotes when um, Jeff Goldblum's character is giving an ethics lecture said, yeah, just because they could doesn't mean that they should. That's right. And I agree because there, are, yes, in Tableau, you could add ages or GPA or even say basketball free throw percentages, but that's, that's right. meaningless, right? Um, so yeah, this notion that the, the application will do all the thinking for me um, is not true. And it, it's true with R, it's true with Python, it's true with Tableau, Excel, anything. So yeah, this uh, notion that you got to keep things in your head and, and solve problems and not just Google the first result and uh, exactly. I could not agree more. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, even when I teach econ, I tell them, I tell my students all the time, don't memorize the rules, don't follow the rules, understand the problem, and then solve. So it's the same in whatever field you are in. That is a good way to end it, D. Yes. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time, class. This has been a real treat. Smart cookie over here. Any last words of advice for my students? Uh, good luck on your final and make those Tableau um, workbooks or worksheets or dashboards, put them on public and good luck. <laughs> not, the one for the, not the one for the final. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But make them different and get some inspiration from Tableau Public. Absolutely. I will send you guys those links. Thanks, Deep. All right. See ya.